forget you. Say goodbye and see you go without gifts. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Elizabeth. <laughs> Lines to Amelia upon leaving Miss Pinkerton's Academy. <laughs> farewell, farewell, sweet friend of childhood years. <laughs> Let sorrow not detain thee, nor our tears. <laughs> Thy wings have grown, they seek another nest. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, 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 oh. Poor Amelia. Now she'll never hear the end of that tender poem. Oh, well, there's too much bad poetry in the world anyway. But, Becky, haven't you a single tear for the years you've spent here? No, my sweet, tears are not expected of charity pupils. Oh, no, no tears. Humility. Gratitude for an education, not very useful, but oh, so genteel. And curtsies for the leftover food at the second table and the lovely frocks that the other girls would no longer wear. Oh, no, Laura. No tears. We orphans must learn that the luxury of emotion is for our better. <laughs> Miss Pinkerton herself. <gasps> Miss Sedley, <coughs> as you now leave us to return to the polished and refined bosom of your family, you depart rich in those virtues and accomplishments which characterize the young English gentlewoman. <coughs> in music, uh, dancing and orthography, you have realized our fondest hopes. And in the principles of religion and morality, you have proved yourself worthy of this establishment. <coughs> Receive then, dear child, this elegantly bound copy of the illustrious Dr. Johnson's dictionary as a token of my affection. A dictionary? Oh, it shall always rest under my pillow. No. <laughs> Miss Sharp. The time has come when oui, you oui, go... mademoiselle. Je vais vous faire mes adieux. Be good enough to respond in the English tongue. Oh, dear, Miss Pinkerton, I'd quite forgotten that you can't understand French. For a moment, I thought I was talking to my dear dead mother, whose language it was. But who could blame me or any of us for thinking of you as a mother? Miss Sharp, what I meant to say was, you are about to go forth into the world alone, unaided, to exist by the fruits of your labor. I hope you go with a feeling of gratitude for the gift you have received within these walls. Oh, Mom, what other feeling is possible? Not one of hatred, certainly. Not one of wanting to leave this place. Or a feeling that you took me because I was useful. Mercy, wasn't it a joy teaching the younger girls music and French and knowing how much money I saved for you? Oh, it was. It was. Goodbye, then. Oh, this dictionary for you. <laughs> Miss Pinkerton. Mr. Joseph Sedley, ma'am. Enter, sir. Joseph. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Dearest Jock. Well, oh, bless my soul, it must be you, is it? <laughs> now, Jock, how many sisters have you? <laughs> Monsters clever, you to put it that way. Monsters clever. <laughs> Went home to Chiswick Mall, sir. Your servant, ma'am. Your mom. sister's belongings are ready. Splendid. Meredith, fetch my sister's trunk. And now let us kiss our little friends, Emmy, and, and be on our way. <laughs> <laughs> Adieu, dear friend. Oh, my Becky, to think we must part now. Yes, part. Where will you go? What's going to happen to you? Oh, does it matter? Thank heaven you are safely cared for. <laughs> oh, Becky, permit me, my brother Joseph. Your servant, ma'am. Who's coming to take you away, darling? The diligence. Public conveyance. Well, it'll have to do. I've no gallant brother to claim me. But my four horses claim you, but are waiting outside. Miss Sharp's traveling arrangements have already been made. What is your destination? Well, I have no destination. Not until I find a home, or a room, or garret, any pillar to lay my head upon. Amelia's is true, not a pillar to her name. No, it isn't true, no longer. Becky, you're coming home with me and, until you find suitable employment somewhere. No, no, I mustn't burden you. Oh, you mm. angel. Huzzah! I shout huzzah! My man will see to your trunk presently. 
I feel it my duty to warn you. I can't abandon her. She has nobody. Nobody. Goodbye, Miss Pinkerton. Goodbye. <laughs> Too. I've kept all of your dear flowers. Becky, I, I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> By Jove, dare I call you my... Your what, Joseph? My bird, or, or something similar. I wonder if young Osmond in there is calling Amelia something similar. I admire men who do not hesitate to express their emotions. And I offer you my heart, my true affection. I offer you love, Amelia, and a lifetime of devotion. Now you have heard us both. The choice is yours, madam. Why do you make it so difficult for me? Two little boys I grew up with. How am I to choose between them? I might have say no to you, William, whom I've always respected. Or, or to you, George, whom I've always... Always... Uh, Loved, Amelia? Loved? Admired. Let him be your choice, then. Take George. Oh, my dear. Oh, I shall love you nonetheless, always. Only I shall think of you as a sister. A sister who is married to my best, my oldest friend. William, William Dobbin, and I, no man ever had a truer friend. By Jove, that scoundrel kissed my sister's hand. I'll make him marry her. Too late, Joseph. The question has just been popped. What? Why, I didn't realize it. Why, that's, that's beautiful. What a handsome best man you'll make. <laughs> Only I'll not be there to see you. I'll be gone by then. Not if Joseph Sedley has anything to do with it. How can Joseph Sedley keep me here? By offering you the continued hospitality of his father's home. You're too noble. Well, if you were to keep me here any longer, I should never want to leave. I dream that I could stay forever. Oh, see your balcony, oh, receive your roses. An idle dream, isn't it, Joseph? I, I. A foolish, unrealizable dream. But I must face the world, look for employment. Becky, Becky, don't. I. Uh, what is it, Joseph? Do you care? Do I care? Why, when I, when I think of you without a home, I, I. I'm completely unmanned, unmanned. I, uh, uh. Becky, Becky, I have news to tell you, such wonderful news. George Arthur has asked for your hand and you've accepted him. Oh, my little blushing bride. You're happy? Oh, Becky, you'll never know how happy you're not in love. Oh, perhaps I am. Perhaps I too have given my heart. And you never told me about it. We wanted to surprise you. Joseph is so shy, so timid. Oh, Joseph. Oh, Becky, you poor, poor girl. Poor? Is Joseph so undesirable a match? Oh, then it must be I. A father would never approve. I, I know any. I understand. I've reached above my station. I've no fine pedigree. Oh, stop, Becky. Father has ambitions for Joseph. He plans to send him to India on government service. Wise, Father. Well, don't we, precious. I'll marry him one of these days, some worthy tradesman, a draper, a greengrocer, someone humble, fit to my position. Present my compliments to your father and say that I'm leaving tonight. And good luck to Joseph, the civil servant. 
The government needs men of courage, decision, men of brains. Ladies and gentlemen of them. If it keeps <laughs> And this is their brother. <laughs> Not a whit better than they for all his holy ends. I welcome you under our roof tree. May you find peace and happiness here. Peace and happiness, he said. <laughs> I don't think I've had sufficient training for the position your father so kindly offered me. If you would so inform the baronet. He informed the baronet. Hasn't the baronet ears of his home to hear? <laughs> Bless you, Missy. I'm Sir Pitt Crawley, and these are my children. <laughs> 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 That's another son, as worthless a scoundrel as ever wore the king's uniform. <laughs> then you'll not be staying, eh? Pox, take it. Why, you're the prettiest governess I've ever had my hands on. Sir Pitt, as I was saying, although I haven't had enough experience for so exacting a position, Still, I should like to accept. These dear little children have completely won my heart. Oh, you'll live to regret it. But I'm glad. My name is Becky, darling. Would you like me to read you a pretty story? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and here I bring you The Blind Washerwoman of Moorfield, a moral and instructive volume. Mr. Pitt, your kindness said, sir, but I haven't yet finished Thrump's legacy that you brought me last week. Read them both, then. Read them both. Works by pious authors are soothing to the soul. <laughs> what was that about the soul, Pitt? Let me hear it, too. You know how your sermons always affect me. You are too far sunk in the morass of iniquity, my beloved brother, for my sermon. <laughs> I hope to see you later, Miss Rebecca. Uh, now I must work on my speech for the Questionable Aid Society. <laughs> Questionable aid society. How on earth do you stand him, Becky? What choice have I? I must watch the side my bread is buttered on. Why eat bread where that little mouth was made for cake and kisses? <gasps> and of the two, you would willingly supply the second. Oh, not enough. Not half so nourishing as bread. On the contrary. Every kiss counts, Becky. <laughs> I'm returning to London tomorrow. Regimental duty. London's such a large town. 
So many willing lips to please a soldier. Yes, but none like yours. <laughs> Becky, these pretty little hands, who will hold them when I'm gone? Well, they'll be very busy. Washing Violet and combing Rose and mending Sir Pitt's shirt. Oh, blast it. You shouldn't be doing all that. Becky, if I were to ask you to come to oh. London, to find a position for yourself. I've tried all that. No, Queen's Crawley is my haven. Oh, but there must be something. Some... Becky, wait. I have an aunt in London. Young and pretty, of course. No, old and a spinster, but rich. I can persuade her that she shouldn't stay alone. That she needs a companion. And I need a protector, Rawdon. Becky! Becky Sharp! Can't you hear me? Where is that girl? Sharp! 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 Miss Crawley, ma'am, are you perhaps calling Miss Sharp, ma'am? No! I'm calling on heaven to help me preserve me calm. Where are my drops? Where's my jelly? Am I to sit here and be murdered with inattention? Where in blazes is that misbegotten girl? Miss Crawley, ma'am, if I may venture the opinion, ma'am, Miss Sharp has left the house, ma'am, probably on some dark, amorous errand. Some dark, amorous errand, eh? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past that. Oh, I've been watching her for weeks. A smile for the butcher and a smile for the baker. That girl hasn't a principle to bless herself with. Uh, <laughs> That's what I like about her. Yes. What are those weeds doing here? You know how vegetation nauseates me. But these were brought by your nephew, ma'am, Captain Crawley. They're a cozy nosegay. Throw it out. And throw my nephew out, too. What the devil is he doing round here every single day? Well, that's not hard to guess, ma'am. Miss Sharp has a way of blinking and a way of winking. Briggs, are you suggesting that my nephew would as much as notice that girl? How dare you? Show him in. And get Miss Sharp for me. Go to her room. Get her. Don't you come back here without her. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my head, my head. I know I shall get the vapors. Miss Crawley is awaiting you, sir. Dear Aunt Julia. Well, sir, to what am I indebted for the questionable honor of this visit? To the affection of a devoted nephew. And do devoted nephews always get themselves oiled and barbered to call in their maiden aunts? Huh? <laughs> or did you hope to find Becky Sharp at home? Answer me. Becky, eh? No, I'll not have you so much as look at Becky. Remember that. Why, well, that girl will twist you around her little finger. Yes, but Aunt Julia, I assure you... Don't that... assure me, sir, I'll assure you. I've been indulgent, I've been generous, I've paid your card debts, and I've laughed at your extravagance. But I'll not have you ensnared by any calculated little snip of a menial. The woman you marry must be a lady, and a lady of quality. Oh, oh, oh. How dare you come bounding into the room like this? Oh, dear. Just as I knowed. Miss Sharp's not in her room. She's not in the house. There isn't a stitch of clothing in the closet. And there's a trunk all packed. Trunk? Packed? Well, oh. where is it? Be here instantly. Well, well, well. You expect me to go for it myself? Hurry, hurry. Well, who is it now? Am I never to have any peace? Rod, put that brandy down. Ardent spirits are for invalids only. Give it to me. Mr. Pitt Crawley, ma'am. That puling hypocrite. Don't you dare show him in. Well, sir, isn't London difficult enough without your presence? Here you come, reeking with the vulgar roses of the country. Uh, <laughs> madam, I've been sent by my good father. That old reprobate, what's he want? Uh, my dear father wishes to know if you still have need of Miss Rebecca's services. I certainly haven't, but neither has he. Uh, Sir Pitt is lonesome, madam, very lonesome. <laughs> if he's lonesome, let him join Napoleon at Elba. Then they can both be lonesome together. <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> the trunk, man. Oh, are you here? Oh. oh, open it. And now we shall see what we shall see. Angels above! Why, what the deuce is this? Not what a respectable female I should gaze on. Tight. And look at this. Pantomime. Oh, and an horrid licentious wig. Confound your leave her things alone. She's acting on my orders, Rodden. Here's a rouge part. Cosmetics. Oh, <laughs> sinful, <laughs> sinful. Give me that. And here is Becky Sharp herself. 
Wait. In Becky's own handwriting. A portrait of my mother. Becky Sharp's mother, a dancer? At the risk of contradicting you, ma'am, Miss Sharp's mother was an aristocrat. A French lady by the name of Montmorency. You're wrong, Rawdon. I have it on Miss Rebecca's own authority that her mother's name was Denier. But here it says, a portrait of my mother by my father. A painter fellow. And I had it on Becky's own authority that her father was distinguished and rich. I don't care what that blasted thing says. I don't believe a word of it. Not a single word of it. Believe it, Captain Crawley. Believe anything. Everything. Only these relics, they are mine, sacred to me. And no hand shall ever touch them but my own. How well I remember that sweet smile. Her portrait painted in exile. This is how she looked. Always when she bent over my bed, singing me to sleep. Yes, my mother was a dancer. She danced herself and she taught others to dance. But she was an aristocrat. Oh, make no mistake about that. A Montmorency of the finest blood of France. And that was the sin for which she was exiled by the revolution. A chateau burned, her state confiscated, her fortune taken from her. Yes, she danced. Danced to feed her baby, her only child. To clothe me. To shelter me. <laughs> Do you wonder now why I treasure these things that remind me of my sainted mother? And it's here that a string of these. Miss Rebecca, don't. Sorrow diminisheth when the heart is pure. Bricks. How oh, dare you apologize to me, Sharp, at once? Be young. Be a bit young. The poor girl. We were so unjust to her. Oh, you faint. A little brandy, please. And send for Dr. Quackenbush. I know I'm going to die. We must all pass when the hour cometh. <laughs> Darling, why didn't you tell me? Do you suppose I would have cared who your mother was, how you were brought up? Why did you have to hide things from me? If you'd led my life, you'd want to hide some things even from yourself. Oh, tell me, are you sorry about yesterday? I sorry? Why, Becky, darling, you're my wife now, my own sweet wife. <laughs> your wife? We've been married less than 24 hours and already you doubt my words. I don't, darling. I only want to know. No? What more? Still more? Endlessly? Do you want to hear about my father? How he drank? How drink killed his talent, his hopes, his wife. Well, he beat her. And when I begged him, Daddy, Daddy, don't strike her, strike me. What do you think he did? Well, I'll tell you, he struck me. Oh, my sweet Becky, my poor darling. Oh, don't pity me. Perhaps I'm lying. Perhaps I'm inventing the story as I go along. I don't care. I still love you. Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. Love me, Rawdon. Love me. I've had so little love in my life. I've been kicked about so much. Well, take me away from here. Oh, but, Becky, we couldn't do that. My aunt would disinherit me. Well, who cares if she does? We mean more to each other than money. Oh, darling, get a hackney coach. Come for me when it's dark. <laughs> oh, why did I want you, my silly? What have you? Not a penny, not a plan, not ambition. Oh, but we'll make out, my rod, and we'll make out. Life owes me many things, and I intend to get them. All it takes is the least touch of wit. Oh, don't look so disturbed. I don't expect you to supply the whip. That's my dowry to you. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Osborne, you cynic. <laughs> I'll not have you saying such things in my house. Marriage is far too sacred to jest about. Amelia, did you hear what your husband said? No, darling. That Rawdon was prolonging our honeymoon just to scare other men away from me. George is such a whip. Yes, both of you are, dear. Do you think I've done justice to your treasure, Lieutenant Osborne? Beautiful. So delicate. Is that all the praise I deserve? Oh, Amelia, your husband's embarrassing me. He simply doesn't respond to all. <coughs> Don't be too critical, love. Your beauty is too gentle to reproduce. Oh, Becky, how talented you are. <laughs> it's lovely. Oh. George, what the deuce is keeping you? We want you back in the game. Oh, George. 
George, please don't play anymore. You've lost so much lately. Oh, let him play. Gambling's an agreeable vice for young men. We can't afford it. We're already in debt. Debt? No, my precious. Look about you. This is a house the debt built. Why, and we're in debt. You're standing on a debt rug. Oh, we must owe money to every shopkeeper in London. We mustn't, but we do. Come on, George. Let me touch your hand. Nice. It'll bring you luck. Come old gentleman. I said eight, and I keep my word. Only three short. Yes, <laughs> try him out. It's my turn. Where's your lady, Rawdon? She promised to stand behind my chair and bring me luck. Well, she promised me that. Perhaps that's the way she entices Rawdon's victims. <laughs> the victim, she plays no favorites, does she, gentlemen? George, would you like to throw next? <laughs> How many years since I heard you play last? It was on your own heart, because How I envied you for it. But then I envied you for so much. For all that you had, and I didn't. Becky, you envied? You didn't pay any attention to me at all. You were too busy with Joseph. That fat brother of yours? Oh, how you all worried for fear I'd marry him. That's why poor Joseph was shipped off to India, wasn't it? Becky, you know father, he was... He oh, was never so... mind, pet. That's all forgotten. That's the past. Oh, Becky, you're the most generous, most forgiving, darling. Becky, Amelia, Captain Thorndyke has just told us. Napoleon has escaped from Elba. Napoleon? Napoleon? War? War, yes. Our regiment will be ordered to Belgium. How terrible. How amusing. Becky, <gasps> what are you saying? What luck. What incredibly dazzling luck. Are you out of your mind? Yes, I'm crazy for joy. War, Belgium, a new start. But what have we here? Debts, tradesmen getting nasty, bills. But why do you think our luck will improve in Brussels? Because we are forced it to. Silver, aren't they pretty? I found them in a little curiosity shop and I couldn't resist them. Seven. Seven again. Becky. I don't imagine I'd ever use them. How silly you are. You look so frightened. They happened to amuse me. I had no idea they were loaded. Not for us, are they, dear? That's not the way to coax Lady Luck. Not your way. By God, no. No, sweet. No. Remember what's ahead of us. Brussels. Brussels. Well, everybody will be there. The officers with their wives, the best people, the richest people, society. A new life, Rawdon. Oh, we should be very grateful to Napoleon. Oh, you darling. Wellington keeps us in Brussels. England expects every man to do his duty. Night play. Now, General, <laughs> don't make me sorry I invited you. I shall send you home. To be thrown out by the Duchess of Richmond is the beginning of a social career. <laughs> Impossible, man. But don't listen to him. I adore it here. So breathtaking, so brilliant. And always the danger of a sudden attack. Oh, no danger, my dear. There'll be no fighting till the Prussians join us. Prussians? Oh, no. No, I don't. Ah, Mrs. Yes, Crawley, a waltz, a single waltz. No, 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 don't ask me, not the waltz. Well, can't I press you, Mrs. Crawley? That's just what I was afraid of. <laughs> Such an immodest dance, don't you think, Prince? Oh, cling and swing. It's the dance of the angels. Of fallen angels. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, she slapped Papa. That was Papa, Mrs. Crawley slapped. Pay no attention, Vance. You're too fine to notice such vulgarity. Oh, that slap. 
What memories it evoked. Would you believe, ma'am, Mrs. Crawley honoured my ears once by, by slapping them? Why, the inelegant creature, whatever induced the Duchess of Richmond to invite a mere little ex-governess? Don't let me be, gentlemen, I'm weakening. I find it impossible to choose from among you. Charming. <laughs> then choose me, Becky. Becky? Don't you know me? Have I changed so much in these few years? Oh, no, it isn't true. It can't be. Not Joseph Sedley. <laughs> the name sounds familiar to me, ma'am. <laughs> By George, Becky, it's good to see you. You haven't changed a bit. I could have picked you out from amongst the regiment. I'm still the same little girl who wasn't good enough for you to marry. Oh, don't say that, Becky. You know I'd have married you in a moment if it hadn't been for those elephants. You know, it was Father who shipped me off to India to hunt the blasted pachyderm. I know. Your dear little sister, Media, told me all about it. But then, uh, what were you doing in India, John? Your son? Becky, you... You blackened my character. No, I collected taxes and butterflies for a prince. I gave him a lot of butterflies. <laughs> well, I'd rather hear about the taxes. Come, let's make Rawdon listen. Rawdon, where is he? Three eights, good for six, and one for his knob seven. Sorry, old chap, my game again. As usual. It's nothing but luck, eh, Rawdon? Nothing but luck, George. Very good, then I owe you 30 pounds. Rawdon, George, I brought you a dear old friend. <laughs> How are you, Rawdon? I've already seen Joseph, all of him. Well, you've been neglecting me all evening. Take me for a dance, George. Joseph will play your silly cribbage. Oh, Rawdon, perhaps you'll let him beat you at billiards. Billiards? I haven't touched a cue for three years. Oh, George. Although we have a similar game in India, except we play it with one ball and a mallet on horseback. <laughs> I'm dying for a dance. No, I want to talk to you. Here. Now you shall give me my answer. I'm not very good at giving answers. I shall seldom listen to the questions. You'll listen to this one. Why didn't you reply to my letter? Because only very silly people put such things in writing. Rawdon can read, you know. What if he had seen your letter? Somebody had whispered about it into Amelia's silly little ears. Mm, it's too late for me to be concerned about Amelia. You and I are going away. Are we? I love Rawdon. Always remember that. I remember it daily. I remember when I lose to him 10 pounds, 50 pounds. I tell myself it'll buy so much lace, so much silk for Becky. Champagne, servants. You've been expensive, Becky, but I lost willingly. Now I've no more. I'm in debt. Have you ever tried to borrow? Not a bad method. There's no one left to borrow from. But that doesn't matter, does it? You don't care anything about money. You make such charming conversation. Why do you deprive Amelia of it? Becky, listen to me. No, I don't want to go in there. I can't bear to see them together. Becky on George's arm. George is either dancing with her or losing at cards to her husband. Oh, William, I, I can't do anything. I'm helpless. I'll take Becky for a dance. And after the dance, she'd find him again. Trust her. Oh, if I could only make George understand. And there's another thing I didn't like about your letter. You misspelled every other word. Oh, hang my spelling. Don't play with me. Is there someone else? No. Who is that man? Oh, I intended just a homey, intimate affair. A little singing, dancing. Oh, my dear, dear Lord Stane. Dear Lord Stane, I've been looking for you. I thought you were hopelessly lost. Your Grace, you must blame the Polish ambassador. Ah, diplomatic secret? Not at all. The ambassador has too pretty a wife. She has won me over completely to the Polish cause. At least to the better half of the Polish cause. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what is his name? I want to know. How perfect your instincts are, Becky. The Marquis of Stain, Stain with his millions. Bigger game, eh? Do tell me about Napoleon. I'm so interested in him. Is there any danger here in Brussels? No, madam, as far as I know, Napoleon is many leagues away. <laughs> is it true that the King of Prussia is bent on leading his own army? Freddy, Freddy lead an army. I wish I could whisper to you what the Tsar Alexander told me about that. My lord, you hobnob with all the crown heads of Europe. No, only with those that still remain on their royal shoulders. You see, dear Lady Bearacres, royal heads have been known to hop away from their bodies, especially in France. Remarkable how many people managed to come tonight. Lady Blanche, I was so sorry to hear about your mother's misfortune. I do hope the operation was successful. Operation, oh, lady. To think of her going blind at her age, and now she can't recognize even acquaintances. These are glass eyes you're wearing, aren't they? Perfect, perfect. I do hope they'll continue to attract men. Oh. Who is that remarkable woman? The brightest new star in our social sky. Introduce me. I could spend many nights studying astronomy. <laughs> Mrs. Crawley, permit me. The Marquis of Stain, who craves the honor of your acquaintance. Hello. Will you favor me with a dance, Mrs. Crawley? What a joy it's a waltz. 
so fond of him? Oh, I could die for the waltz. There's some who call it an immodest dance, but I've always called it the dance of the angels. George, Amelia's alone on the terrace. Go to her, ask her for a dance. It's a drink I need, not a dance. Me war means rising stocks. I play for Napoleon's defeat. What do you play? I? Patience. And we are both above the fortunes of nations. But not above war. War champagne, froth, bubbles. Your head swims, your heart beats. Then your glass is empty. And you wake with a headache. Headaches can be cured. Heartaches too, my lord. By drinking more wine, a new bottle. And a new hand to pour it. Oh, my lord, I get drunk so easily. Are we both waiting for a light in that sky, madam? Yes, I want this night to end. I don't want the dark. Heaven help us if it ends too soon. If light comes before it's due. Oh, Grace. Who is that man? The Duke of Wellington. Oh. What's there in the distance? There? A village. A small village. Waterloo, or some such name. <laughs> <laughs> and then they went on from there. And it was at that point... be a thunderstorm. Come on, man. Oh, 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 oh. I say, it was, was that a cannon? General, I Your Grace, can, can they shoot this far? Sometimes I almost wish they could. Oh, it's nothing. It must have been the wind. Just a thunderstorm. <laughs> oh, I was so frightened. It's a false alarm. Just dance.
Come with me. I'll take you home. We could still leave. The call to colors. Did you hear it, Lieutenant? The call to colors. It means nothing to me. You're coming with me. Oh, I'll desert Becky. We'll go somewhere to Canada, to Sydney. Only let's hurry. There's still time. Why not take your wife, George? Occasionally, you must remember that you're married. George! Oh, my dear, I've been so concerned about you. You, Becky, concerned about anyone but yourself? You can't take George from me. Oh, heaven. You'll never take him from me. Oh, you're excited, Amelia. You're frightened. Well, I don't want your George. See her home, George. Take care of my poor Emily. Au revoir, George. I'll be watching you from the balcony. Ron! Darling. Oh, Ron. Darling, where have you been? Wellington's orders. I just dashed back for a few moments. Oh, darling, I, I have so many things to tell you before I go. I've been happy with you. I've gambled and I drank, but always, always I've loved you. Loved each other. Understood each other. Take this money. I shan't need it. Sell my watch, my silver dressing case. Oh, darling, I leave you with so many debts. No, and, no. And sell my two horses. Don't think about money. I'll make out. Well, now pray for you, Ron. I want you back. I love you now. I've never loved anybody else. I must go now. But remember, never forget this. I worship you, Becky, from your little toes up. <laughs> for that. Would you do me the honor, Lord Liverpool, please condescend, and uh, Mrs. Simmons, Mrs. Simmons, please, your grace, uh, Mr. Shelley, uh, My dear brother. Lord Holland and I wish to sue for the privilege of sitting on your right. The loser is to challenge the winner to pistols at 40 paces. Lord Holland's seat is next to Lady Southstone, and you are by the famous Mrs. Siddons. What would Mayfair say if the dangerous Beau Brummel sat next to me? 
clap their hands. You can't clap your hands when you're whispering behind your palm. <laughs> Lord, stay. <laughs> Huzzah! I shout a heartfelt huzzah. With all these famous men here, I feel I'm speaking in the House of Lords. <laughs> or lying in Westminster Abbey. <laughs> Why did you bring me here, Pitt? This is a wicked, immoral atmosphere. Look at Lord Stain and that woman. That woman is your sister-in-law now, Jane, please remember. And remember also that she's very pious. Why, before I married you, she and I used to read sermons together. Everything is so delightful in your new home, my dear. Uh, these pictures, a family portrait. Ancestors, Lady Southdown. Oh, yours or Captain Crawley? Oh, mine. The Duke and Duchess de Corbinet. Lavinia and Alastair. I bought them last week, five pounds apiece. <laughs> Bravo. You've got the meeting out of your hand. Well, they may invite it later. Becky, you've arrived. Where, my lord? Not St. James's Palace. Not yet. Patience, Becky. Patience. St. James would be shaken to its solemn foundation. The foundations may be solemn, but the head isn't. To be presented, Mrs. Broadus Cross. Did you get it? Yes, I have the address. And the man absolutely guarantees to take ten pounds off you in a week. Ah. To be presented, Lady Sybil Gray. Well, up then. Is the man mad? Can you imagine a tradesman demanding cash in this house? <laughs> An outrage. Shall I kick him down the stairs? Be your usual gallant self and just pay the bill. Well, I'm monsieur. Twenty-five pounds. Oui, monsieur. Well, I don't pay that much for my, my Sunday britches. Merci, monsieur. Look here, Becky. Every time I come here, it costs me money. You either borrow or I have to gamble and lose like a gentleman. Why do you come? To advance myself. Did you or did you not promise me that Lord Stain had have me appointed to some post? Well, I've spoken to him, and he thinks you'd make a very fine council at some distant spot. When? When? I thunder when. Promises are not enough. Am I a consul? Do I wear a sword and a cocked hat? And do I, do I stand for the British Slam? No. Thrice no. Yes, thrice yes. It's all settled. You're to be made consul for Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone? Sierra Leone? But, Becky, those, those chaps are all cannibals. How, how would they take to me? Oh, I think they'd get to like you, bit by bit. Huh? But, but look here, Becky. Oh, at last. Hello, Rob. Where on earth have you been? I've worried about you all night long. Oh, I'm sorry you shouldn't have. I stayed at the club. Club, eh? You must have met some sirens, that's what. Sirens. <laughs> Come now, Rob. Confess. You'll come again tomorrow, won't you? <laughs> well, I'm here now, you know. But wouldn't this be a good time to be buying that cocked hat and so on? That's right. I'll sally forth and have me outfitted, bit by bit. Your servant, Becky. Your servant, Rob. I echo sirens. <laughs> Curry and Carter, 37 pounds for livery. <laughs> and here's a little billy do for 800 or they'll sue. Bagatelle. What's wrong, Rawdon? Everything. I had a nasty night at the club. Almost came to blows with Deuce Ace. Others had to separate us and all that sort of rot. But why? He kept hounding me and threatening me about the 400 pounds that I owe him. He demanded immediate payment. Well, at pretty time he picked, we haven't sixpence. I know, that's the devil of it. After the riot became a matter for the entire club. Naturally, a debt of honor. I was instructed to pay immediately. Well, you go away for a few days and the whole thing will blow over. No, it won't. This is not like owing money to a shopkeeper. This is a gambling debt. I pay or I'm expelled. Captain Dobbin is in charge of collecting it. Who? William Dobbin. He represents the club. Oh. 
Do say sad little swine. Why, he was here last week and he never even mentioned the debt. He and I gambled while you played billiards. Gambled? What did you play? Dice. And I won. For heaven's sake, you didn't buy any... Loaded dice. Oh, come, come now. I promised you I never would. A promise is a promise. Why, I don't even know where they are. I seem to have lost them. Why do you look at me like that? What do you see? That I've become a liar, a cheat? Oh, no, no. But how can I help worrying Becky? So where is all this leading us? Is there any end? Are we getting anywhere? Who knows? Who cares? We live elegantly on nothing a year. Look at all the splendor. It won't last. We are paying heavily little bits of our souls. Well, it's worth the price. Women who cut me last year will give their eyes to be where I am now because they envy me. This is what I've worked for. I won't give it up. Don't ask me to. Oh, darling, enjoy it with me. But I can't get you say out of my mind. Well, I'll raise the money somehow. I could borrow it from... Uh... Stain? You won't, not from him. Well, we have to take the money where we can find it. Not Stain's money. I won't have all London thinking that... You don't really trust me, do you? Is that what you wish to believe? Oh, no, darling. I'll believe only what you tell me and nothing that you deny. Oh, then believe that I'm your Becky and that I love you. I love you and nothing else matters. Oh. Don't worry, darling. Perhaps Darwin can be persuaded to wait. Mrs. Crawley, I'm a brother officer of your husband's and I'm sincerely trying to help him. And all I can say is that the debt will have to be paid promptly. It's a debt of honor. But I've told you we have no money. Where do you propose I turn for 400 pounds? Well, I've no suggestions to make. And I'm afraid you'll have to raise 500, not four. Really? 100 pounds added for interest or damages to do Sace's wounded feelings? I'll try to explain as kindly as I can. Oh. Mr. Ducey came to me privately. He was too much the gentleman to charge this before the club. It seems that you played dice with him sometime last week and he lost a hundred pounds. He did? Well, it's so hard to remember. At your house, you used a pair of silver dice, loaded dice. He managed to take them with him after the game. Unfortunately, I've never seen them before. Do you intend to use them? I hope not. Oh, come, come, aren't you rather enjoying this? Here I am. You've always considered me Amelia's bad angel. You've always hated me. Now I'm in your power. Well, not in my power. I'm still trying to help Rawdon. Oh, of course. Then this isn't a personal matter. Then, if I appeal to your chivalry, would you lend me the money? No? But perhaps you'd grant me a delay. I don't think I could persuade Mr. Ducey. So. I didn't think you would. So I came all prepared to do business with you. I have something to sell, something I think you'd be interested in buying. Madam, I couldn't possibly be... Oh, wait, wait until you see it. I brought it with me. By the way, I was broken-hearted to hear that Amelia had rejected you again. Mrs. Crawley. Poor darling Amelia. She's still possessed with the idea that she must be true to George, loyal to the dear ghost who was so true to her when he was alive. I've no uh, desire to discuss... Not to discuss how to gain the key to her rusty little heart, Captain. Oh, what noble self-denial. George wrote me a letter. Not a literary gem, but clear. The idea was that he and I eloped. You remember the Duchess of Richmond's ball? We were to go away that night. Oh, it would be invaluable in your courtship. Can you imagine the change it would bring in Amelia? It's for sale, 500 pounds. Mrs. Crawley, women like you... <laughs> How much time have I to pay? Till tomorrow morning. Oh, generous, generous. You'll get the money. I was just thinking, if I were Amelia, would I respond any more readily to your charms? <laughs> I walked up and down in front of the hotel, and I didn't dare come in. But how could I resist when I knew you were in town and... Uh... But, Rebecca, you haven't told me anything. What is it? What has happened? Tell me. Oh. No, I can't. Your kindness only makes it worse. Rebecca, my dear girl, my own little sister, tell me. I, I have a right to know. I'm the head of the family now. Oh, why do you force me? It's so humiliating to talk of money. Oh, dear, perhaps you're right. Uh, your, 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 your secrets are your own. Yes, why should I tell you that I need 500 pounds at once or else I'll kill myself? You shouldn't. You mustn't. Even if you did, I couldn't afford any more money. Oh, I know, I know. You've always been most generous. Besides, someone else has offered to help me. Someone else? Who? Oh, a friend. Uh, 
On second thought, you can have it, sister. Brother. Uh, but uh, on a condition that you let me rescue you from an unholy and imprudent connection. Oh. I refer to the Marquis of Stain. Promise me that. Dear Rebecca, promise me. My conscience is against it. Mm -hmm. My conscience. And your conscience is kissing my hand now. Yes, my brotherly love. Ah, oh, Rebecca, do you recall how, how we read sermons together? Couldn't we read a few soon? Isn't the Marquis of Stain fortunate? He has no conscience. And as for brotherly love, not an ounce of it. Thus each performs her part, Mama. The birds have found their voices. And I'm to find 500 pounds for you and thus perform my part. Hmm? Blowing rose of flesh, Mama. A bonny cheek to die. Why do you sing, my dear? It's such a prosaic matter. I sing because I'm embarrassed, and I sing because I hate to beg. I'm sorry I appear to make it so difficult for you. <laughs> the money is at your disposal, of course. And what is it for this time? Pretty ribbons? Toast for your breakfast? Or to say my name? Or charity? Ah, oh, charity. There we have it. I'm trying to help an unfortunate man with a deserving wife. Perhaps you know them. The Crawleys. He got in a disagreeable mess at his club. A gambling debt. I'm delighted with the opportunity to serve you. If I give you this money, Will you consider the possibility of granting me this evening that little supper that you've promised me for so long now? Oh. I've been very patient, you know. Uh, I am sorry, but Rawdon and I had planned something else for this evening. Will he not be going to the club in a hurry to pay that unfortunate debt? Perhaps. He'll have to, won't he? Yes. Thank you, my dear. And now go on with your singing. You sing most charming. There's sunshine in my heart, Mama, which awakens and rejoices. And so I sing and blush, Mama, and that's the reason why. And so I sing and blush, Mama. No luck. No. Did you try everybody? Yes, everybody. Come here. Sit down. Shut your eyes. Now, isn't that a wonderful surprise? Wonderful. Where did you get it? Stain? Oh, nonsense. Young Southdown came in this afternoon. You know he owed me 500 pounds. No, I didn't. When did you discover it? The moment he sent the money, silly. Sent it? I thought he came over. Well, both. He, he came over and he uh, sent Fifine in with it. Well, take it, darling. Be on your way with it. There's no time to lose. No, I suppose not. Well, darling, you've had a miserable day. You need some amusement. Would you like to stay at the club this evening and play billiards? Yes. Rotten! You're not taking the money. Yes, I was going to leave the money, wasn't I? But you must go tonight. Tonight, eh? It would be quite serious if I didn't. Tonight. I agree with you. Oh, Rotten, it's our last day. We'll never have another. Once this last debt is paid. <laughs> but did it really happen? Well, it may have. <laughs> no sugar. Thank you for remembering. Ah, your little heart is flooded. And my little head is in the clouds. And your senses swim. Don't leave that out, Becky. In a sea of happiness. I don't know what I'm about. I'll tell you. You are about to eat a strawberry. I saw you watching them while I was kissing your hand. My lord, you've wounded me. Do you question my emotion? On the contrary. I'm flattered that a midnight visit from the wolf should prove so exciting to a lamb of your coolness and self-possession. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint your lordship, but this lamb is far from being excited. 
She thinks there's some good in every wolf. Poor optimistic lamb. What was that? Nothing. Somebody singing in the street or quarreling or making love. Why, you don't expect an intruder, do you? No. Returning husbands can hardly be called intruders. What a pity that yours is forced to remain away. You seem confident, my lord. I am. Curiously enough, Mr. Crawley was arrested by a bailiff just as he was entering his club. Arrested? So I have reason to believe. Of course, I wasn't there to see it myself. It was a most unfortunate mistake. In the morning, the mistake will be discovered. There will be apologies. The whole thing will be treated as a harmless little joke. Only a joke. Then we are free to enjoy the wine. And with your wit and charm, how easy it'll be to forget everything. Not everything, Becky. You mustn't forget your ambitions. Ambitions? I worked like a galley slave to get into your fine society. And what have I got for it? The privilege of dining with the dullest people in London. You can't have ancestors and not be dull. I'd rather be a parson's wife. But you're not, Becky. You don't cook and sew and mend stockings. No. Nor do I replenish the earth. Therefore, you must enjoy life as you find it, Becky. We mustn't be hypocrites, you know. Otherwise, what would happen to things like this little feast of ours? This innocent little feast. My lord, always your little generosities. What beautiful pearls. Didn't you hear something? You heard your own wicked little heart. No, no. How did you do it, Becky? How the devil did you ever catch me, Fancy? Because there isn't an ounce of sweetness or goodness about you. That's your secret. Oh, wait, wait. We must drink to that. To your marvelous portrait of me. To your shrewd understanding. Here's to... Lord, my Lord and I having... You didn't go to the club. When you left the house, you, you didn't go to the club. A trap, hmm? Mrs. Crawley's husband returns home unexpectedly. He doesn't go to his club. Well, sir, how much am I blackmailed for? Oh, I've done nothing. I'm innocent. My Lord, tell him I'm innocent. Innocent? Come, what's the amount? I've already paid 500 your absence. No, no, no! Run! I'll make you pay for this. You'll regret this to the end of your life. Why bother? Why squabble about something that you don't own and I don't want? Oh, Rodden, listen to me. If I've ever done anything... Those pearls, take them off. I can explain. I've nothing to hide. All the world might have been here. Don't hate me! Oh, let them go. I don't want them. It's only you I want. I love you. I love you. I won't let you go. I'll fight for you. I couldn't have done anything else. I had to help. I had to do something for you, for both of us. Don't hate me. Try to understand. Oh, my darling, I'm yours. Nothing else matters. My love for you is the only real thing I have in my life. Don't take that away from me. <laughs> Don't leave me. You can't leave me. I'm your wife. Not my wife. Just someone I was once married to. But that's over with. Ron! Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, they'll all laugh at me. Oh, how they laugh. <laughs>
for the landlord, because you pay today or out you go. Tell him I'll settle tomorrow. <laughs> Do you think he'll believe that? He heard all about what happened to the great singer last night. I'm expecting a remittance any day now. I've written to my brother who's a rich man, a baroness. <laughs> Your brother. <laughs> I used to call him me cousins. I had an earl and a coat. You wouldn't think it, would you, looking at me now? I was a dancer. I had me home in Park Lane, me jewels, me carriages. Now I've got me broom and me scrubbing brush. There won't be any brush for me nor broom, you old crow. It's not in the cards. The King of Hearts, Broaden. See how close we are to each other? There's the King of Spades between you. The King of Spades. He always keeps us apart. Well, you can forget about it if you drink enough brandy. Superstition nonsense. I'm not the queen of hearts, and Rawdon's not the king. Who cares? Cards won't bring him back anyway. Then why do you sit here wishing and sighing? Because I dream, and I don't want to dream. I don't want to see him shipwrecked, killed, dying of fever. Ace of spades. Do you think he's dead? Cards never lie. Oh, what the devil? Perhaps we're not welcome. Here. Is this Crawley? Becky? Come in. Becky, what a time I had finding you. What happened to you after the theater last night? Did, did you fly off in a balloon? <laughs> Becky, you mustn't look away. Emmy, how can I face you here, looking like this? Uh. Joseph, my gentle friend. Ah, oh, that's better. Thought you were going to throw me out. You know, that brush in my, in my stomach wasn't very cordial. 
Emmy, what are you doing here? Why did you come? Nothing could have kept me away. Oh, but when Joseph came home and said that he'd seen you, why I said, Emmy, I've just seen Becky cutting capers. <laughs> she said you didn't. I said I did capers. We've gone on arguing for hours. But, but, but Dobbin arrived with, with a pineapple. Dobbin? Is he with you? Are you married to him? Oh, no, he, he just happened to accompany us. <laughs> he's been happening for years. What I mean to say is accompanying Emmy. At this very moment, he's, he's down in the tap room, accompanying a mug of beer. <laughs> he wouldn't come up. He still remembers. Oh, don't, Becky. The past must be forgotten. Oh, not that dear. It's such a mess. I've been too sick, too dejected to put things in order. Oh, it doesn't matter, dear. We always used to sit on the bed for our talk. Uh, come sit by me. Amelia. Oh. Becky, I, I still have your little bed. It's in my house. Oh. How would you like to have it again for your very own? I offer it to you with, with all the old affection. Amelia. You can't stay here. Come and live with me. Oh, this is a dream. Dream, eh? Well, it isn't. <laughs> Leave us, John. Go down to Dobbin in the tap room. Becky and I have much to say that's not for strange ears. My ears strange? They're the same ones I've worn for, for 40 years. <laughs> Did you mean what you say? Do you know what you're doing for me? You're saving me from myself, from this, from Pitt with his leering charity in his clammy hands. I've written him a letter, pleading for money. You have no need of him now? No, I can go with you. Oh, for the first time in years, I'm happy again. I can breathe. You've done this for me. You, Emmy, you. Oh, always you've been like a sister to me, always. Come in. Oh, you've decided to come up after all. Amelia, Joseph has just told me that you've asked Mrs. Crawley to... Oh, I knew it. It was too good to love. But you've asked her to come and live with you. He told you the truth, William. Becky's the oldest friend I have in the world. She wasn't always a friend to you. I don't care to remember that. Isn't there such a thing as forgiveness? Forgive her if you will. Help her. Give her money, but don't take her with you. She needs me. She's hard. She's selfish. She'll take advantage of you. As your friend, I can't let you do this. Promise me you won't. I've given you the devotion of a lifetime. This is the only favor I've ever asked of you. If you deny me, this will mean the end of our friendship. I must do what's right. Then, goodbye. You're in love with the man. You can't live without him. It would break your heart to lose him. <laughs> Emmy, I'm not coming home with you. I'll not let you do this. I'll send you back to Dobbin, no matter how much he's hated me. <laughs> Don't give up, love. Don't let it be taken from you by me or anybody else. Fight for it. Keep it. It doesn't come often. But you, you... Don't worry about me. I'll manage. Go downstairs. He'll be waiting for you. Take his hand. Ask him to marry you. I can't. I'll never marry him. You will? Why shouldn't you? Because of George. I must be true to his memory, his love. Love? Why, you fool, you monkey. He never really loved you. He uh, did. I'll prove it to you. No matter what you say or think, he did. Oh, he was never faithful to you. He made love to me because you were hardly married to him. Your husband in heaven. Oh, here it is. You know the handwriting. He wrote this to me. Sent it to me in Brussels right under your unsuspecting little nose. Now you know. Now you are free to forget the past. Go to the man who really loves you. Marry him. Go on, go on. I say, Emmy, did, did you and Dobbin have, have a breeze? Just you're drunk. Drunk? <laughs> I drunk. <laughs> this is an injustice. Am I her only brother? Similarly, is she my only sister? Similarly, where is, is, is she running to? To Dobbin, she's going to marry him. Huh? Well, I, I think that's, that's, that's beautiful. Well, what's the matter with you? What have you lost? Lost my heart out of my bosom to see my sister blessed with such happiness. Well, why weep? They'll be happy, but they haven't stolen all the happiness in the world. I think they have. Would you like to sit down and be just as happy as they are? Yes. Do you like brandy, Joseph? Well, how, how would it sit with, with, with a beer in there? Perfect. Extra fine cognac. 
And we have biscuits and gorgonzola. We'll have a little feast. Do you mind sharing the plate with me? No, quite to the contrary. I'll, I'll even share the, share the bottle. Have only one knife. I'm ashamed to admit, isn't it enchanting? Enchanting. Yes, you're, you're enchanting too. <laughs> drink hearty, drink deep. A million years have passed since we drank together. Or sat together undisturbed, returning glance for glance, smile for smile. Gorgonzola for, for, for Gorgonzola. To the happy two people, to the memory of the past, <laughs> and the joy of the present, when two people meet again and they agree. That's it. Agree. <laughs> I, uh, I honor the sanction, Becky. To pitch their little tent or little cottage with the trees and the stars above. The... I honor the stars <laughs> above. And the murmuring of moonlit streams and the perfume of flowers. <gasps> Does that fetch you, you dear gay fellow? It's you that are gay, Becky. Gay and, and, and gallant. Come, come, come closer, Becky. Oh, oh Josh, you frighten me. You're so intense. Intense, but, but honorable, Becky. Tell me, are you a widow? Yes or no, because you must become my widow next. Later, later we'll talk about it. Now you must help me pack. I've had enough of all this. We're going. Going? Where? Mayfair, India, anywhere, away from all this. Well, we can't, Becky. I, I have no money. No money? You are poor? Who dares accuse Joseph Waterloo Sedley of poverty? No, it's just that I, I have no cash. We have to wait here for a week until my next month's allowance comes. But I can't wait. The landlord will have me jailed by then. Speak of the devil. Who's there? It's I, Rebecca, and Jane. There, my letter, they've come. Oh, what shall I do? Let, let me, let me throw them out. Wait, perhaps they're a blessing in disguise. Is it? Sister. Brother. The money we need, I'll get it from Pitt. Oh, darling Jane, I can't believe it's really you. One moment, I must make myself presentable. Climb out of the window. Pit finds you here, I'll never get the money from him. I'm out. I can't. The cheese has gone to my head. I'm almost ready. Quite ready. Oh, this bliss, this happiness. Oh, Jane. My Jane. My forgiving kinsman, to see you again, to feel my hands in yours after such a long time. Your letter came, Rebecca. Our hearts were deeply touched by your plight. My prayers have been answered. Yes, we've come to rescue you. To restore you to the bosom of our family, to the tranquility of Queen's Crawley. Queen's Crawley? Why, I'm overcome. But before we do that, my dear, you must cleanse your soul. Ah. Rebecca, would it not make you happy to go to church with us? Before we talk of anything else. Oh, I'd go happily, happily. As soon as I settle with the landlord, he'll not let me leave the house until I pay the money I owe him. Isn't the peace of your soul more urgent? Yes, but so is the landlord, urgent. Um, I trust it's not a large amount. Oh, no, 200 pounds. Settle with him for 35. 150? Uh, 50, then. Make it 100, brother, then we can go and listen to the sermon. Oh. Thank you. What was that? Aren't you alone? Alone, always alone. Oh, you must have been a mouse. And now, dear, get your bonnet and come to regain peace. <laughs> yes, regain <laughs> peace. Oh, peace. Uh, regain bonnet. Oh, oh, oh what is wrong? You hear? My heart. The excitement of seeing you again. Some water. Oh, no, no, no. Perhaps I'll feel better soon if I rested. Yes, rest. And I shall stay with you and care for you in your need. Oh, no, you must not. I'd never forgive myself if you miss the service. You must go, dear. I'm used to my solitude. Please go and come back for me later. Come, dear. Rebecca's overwrought. Soon she'll, she'll, she'll be better. Uh, this book of moral precepts which we brought you, when you're better, read and profit. The title is Rewards of Virtue. Ah, uh, until later then, poor child. Rest well. Hundred pounds. 
town. And I owe the landlord 12. Don't stand there blinking at me. We must get out of here. I'm not blinking. That's love. Put the trunk before love. Put those letters in the locket. We're going. Going. India. Rich princes. Taxes to collect. Butterflies and elephants. Ah. Ah. And Rogers and rubies and gold. The book. The book. Oh. Yes, Rebecca? 